Hey guys, Josh with Avalanche Outfitters here in Redstone, Colorado. Um, so it's the end of archery season. I've been getting a lot of questions about gear, packing gear, how to pack it, my weight limit. Um, you know, so I'm going to make this video um, to kind of help you guys with, when you come out to hunt with me or if you go to any other horseback outfitter. Um, you know, every outfitter is going to be different. They're going to want different things, but this is kind of how... I found works best for me, how I prefer to do it. Um, makes it easier on me when I'm packing up your gear in the panniers and stuff. So I'm gonna go through all of my gear, um, how I pack it, what my gear is. Um, I'll probably get in depth with some of it. You know, my kill kit, I'll get in depth with it. Probably gonna be a pretty long video. So I'm gonna put in the comments, everything um, will be, here's my clothing at this time, kill kit at this time. Uh, weighing it out, packing it up, stuff like that. And I'll just put the time so you can skip through if you want. Otherwise, if you want to sit here and watch my pretty face the whole time and, and listen to me, then awesome. But I hope that this will help you guys see what I have and maybe make it to where you are not overpacking anymore. Um, so many guys come in and they get done with the hunt. They're pushing their weight limits so bad. I'm, I'm you know, almost having to cut stuff off. And then they come out and say, man, I... I packed five pairs of pants and I wore two. Um, you know, I packed 30 pairs of socks and wore 10, you know. Um, so I'm trying to make that so that we're not packing extra gear, you're not bringing the extra gear out here. And also for my animals, you know, them mules have to carry it up, they have to carry it back down. And if you're bringing a bunch of stuff, luxury items that you're never gonna use, then, you know, we need to get those out of there and, and consolidate. And then that could give you other room for more stuff that you might need. Um, on your next hunt or, or stuff like that. Um, some of this stuff in this kit is stuff that it's complete luxury or I have to carry it regardless as a guide. Um, so you can add it in if you want, but I'm just trying to make it so that you can see all of my gear, what my gear weighs for a, a week. And this will not include food on this. And I'm gonna do another one for that um, of how I would do my food, um, whether it's a full on bite at all at the grocery store um, I'm going to do a hybrid where there's some regular food, some dehydrated meals, and then a fully dehydrated meal one um, just to kind of help you guys out. So I'm going to get to it and we'll see what go, how it works out. All right, guys. So I'm going to start with not all outfitters are the same. Um, you know, we've all learned different ways. Some of us learned, went to a school. Um, some of us learned by just doing it. Um, some of us have just all we've done. Um, so every every outfitter is going to be different. They're going to have their different little rules, their different little regulations, their different weight limits, suggestions, stuff like that. So don't take this as I'm the one telling you how to go with every place. This is just stuff that I've seen. Um, I'm going on 18 years worth of outfitting, basically. Um, and just kind of stuff. I've seen guys bring stuff. I've seen them not bring stuff. Um, it, it's just kind of a, a personal preference stuff. And this is how I do it. Um, and just it's just to help you guys out and give you a little bit more um, knowledge, especially on your first time. Um, a lot of my guys, when they come back the second, third, fourth time, they've got it streamlined. They know what they need, they, what they don't need. Um, every year, it seems like their their gear gets lighter and lighter, um, which is great, you know. And they're also staying comfortable. So um, there's a few items that I don't have that I really don't carry, um, and I'll let you know what those are. And they might be on my my list, but it's something I don't carry. Um, rain gear is one of them. I really. <laughs> I don't wear the rain gear that much, so it's kind of one of those things that when I have it, I ha I'll bring it, but I buy like the light, cheap stuff because it just doesn't last for me. It gets torn up. I'm riding a horse. It gets ripped up, tore off, everything like that. So I just, I don't have it in the, the thing, my my li my stuff right now, um, even though it's, it's raining right now, but um, I kind of just, just deal with it. <laughs> um, so that is one thing that if you're going to come in a season like archery muzzleloader where there's possibility of it raining, I do suggest it. Uh, more rifle seasons, you know, if it's snowing and stuff, I you're not going to get as wet as, as, as it is if it's raining. So I wouldn't, I, I'd rather have more of a, uh, a water-resistant top layer um, than, than rain gear and having that in my pack all the time. Um, there's also items I'm going to show you that I have in my pack at all times. Um, like I said, some of it is for guiding reasons. Other stuff, it's just because you never know. So um, let's uh, start so looking at when it. When we get, when you show up um, here to Avalanche Outfitters, we're going to go through your gear. We're going to have you set it out, and I'm going to kind of go over it. Um, when you get here, 
I want everything out. I want food, uh, dry food. I want everything out on the tarps, ready to go. Um, I don't, you know, you guys can separate your personal gear into little piles um, so that I can check weight on them and everything like that. But the biggest thing is, is when once you've got it all out and you say this is it, that's the cutoff. There's no more, oh, I forgot this. I got to throw this in. Um, that's the cutoff. Um, it, it's, it happens way too often that, uh, you know, I, I get everything just about packed up and then all of a sudden there's another item needs to be thrown in. And I mean, if it's a couple pounds, it's not a big deal, but sometimes it's a 25 pound bag that is really hard to just fit in somewhere. Um, we have to pack our gear in panniers and it has to be even on both sides. Um, that is for the horse's safety so that it doesn't slip the saddle one way or the other, everything like that. So it's not one of those things that you can just throw in another 10 pounds where you want. Also, when I'm packing the gear, please do not try to sneak stuff in the panniers. Um, it's just, it's unsafe. If that pannier is 10 pounds too heavy and we don't catch it, we could have a complete accident. We're going to be picking up your gear all over. So please make sure when you show up and we're going through it, we get everything out and I know what's going on. Um, it'll help me out. It'll help my packers out everything instead of trying to add stuff in. Or if it's something like, oh, we want to add this case of beer, it's just not going to go in. Um, we'll bring it to you on resupply. That's or um, something like that. We'll bring it in on resupply. Or if you kill something, we come in earlier. That's what we're going to do. All right, guys. So let's talk about the uh, the ride in and everything like that. Um, so if you want to wear some of your hunting clothes going in, that's up to you. Um, some guys, they do, um, you know, wear just regular street clothes when they go in. Um, typically when I go in, um, I've got, you know, kind of like this fleece jacket, probably some thermals depending on the season, my Western shirt, pants, and then today I've got moccasins on, um, but I'll wear my cowboy boots. Um, so that's up to you, you know, um, I try, try not to let guys ride in tennis shoes, but also sometimes if you're wearing your, your hunting boots in, they're big and bulky. Um, but it also depends on the temperature. I mean, you're not going to want to wear your camp shoes in your tennis shoes if, um, you know, it's rainy or snowy or anything like that. Um, so just, you know, be modest with that. Be smart. If you want to wear your hunting clothes in, then, you know, it's, it's taking stuff out of your pack weight limit. So you could possibly add in some extra stuff. Um, that's just up to you though. Um, some guys, you know, if we're riding in and the season's open and we run into animals, you guys are more than welcome to get off and go chase them. Um, the thing is, is I'm going to camp. Um, if I've got me and, an, and my other packer or something, you know, we'll go hunt. We we'll, we'll go out and try to try to get those elk obviously, but, um, yeah, the other guys, and the rest of your gear still got to get in. And one thing I want you guys to remember that that it's not a a bad thing, but um, if you show up late or um, you know something like that, or we get into camp late, you got to remember that me or my packer still have to ride out that night. So um, I try not to do afternoon pack-ins unless I have to. Um, first rifle season is super tough on us to get everybody in. Um, you know, some guys don't want to go in a couple days early to scout. It's, it's just one of those things where I, sometimes I have to do two packings in one day. Um, when I do that, you know, we'll ride in the dark, but I'm going to pick the camp that's easiest for me to get out, um, to come out later. Um, like this year, I've actually got a guided hunt. So I'll most likely pack in a group of guys that morning, um, Friday morning, and then bring in my guided guys because i'm going to stay in camp anyways um and then probably have my wrangler come in the next day to get the horses out and extra stuff like that but at least then i don't have to ride in ride out and stuff like that um so you know um when we say you know be at the stables typically around 9 a.m one thing is is when it's super cold out um you know it, it's it's our job, but it's, it's tough to keep moving, you know, moving fast and stuff like that. Um, so typically, you know, when we do that, it's, it's because we don't want to be out here at, at 6 a.m. in the pitch black freezing. Um, you know, we kind of give it to where the sun will come up and everything like that. You guys will be a little bit warmer, hopefully get a little bit of a, you know, sleep in a little bit so that you can be ready to go. Um, stuff like that. But typically we're going to hit the trail around 11 o'clock. 12 o'clock just it just kind of depends um 
you know so that's that's that um on the pack out um you know i i try to get in there as early as i can personally um some mornings it works out we can get in there super early some mornings it's just you know that we're dealing with a lot of animals and stuff like that um like i tell everybody i wouldn't plan on leaving that day from redstone um make the plans if you want to to drive somewhere but you know sometimes it's been times i i can't get into camp till three four o'clock um you know i try to get, get get you guys in there get you guys down get you on the road but sometimes it doesn't always work out that way um so just be ready for that um you know i try my best to get in there and stuff like that but sometimes it just doesn't work out for us so on your pack out day don't make it you know to where it, it seems like well if i don't leave today you know i don't have enough time to get home or don't definitely don't book a flight on that day um just just in case i mean if it rains all morning sometimes it takes me three four hours to get into a two-hour camp so you got to remember that stuff um and you know if you miss your flight i'm gonna feel really bad too but i've also got to look out for the safety of me my wranglers and especially my animals so um your pack out days just remember that i say be ready by 10 um other thing is if you guys want to go hunt that morning you're more than welcome to just tell me hey you know don't show up till this time that time but if you do harvest something and i'm already on the trail you're gonna have to hike out so that i can get that animal out or um because typically one elk is going to take two mules on average um i have done a full bull on one mule for about a 10 mile pack I don't like doing it. My animals work hard enough, but I will if I absolutely have to. But also, you know, if you want to go hunt that morning, I will, if I have time, I'll go back the next day and get it. Um, or if we get out early enough, I'll go back in that day and get your elk out. But don't count on me coming out and then going right back in to get your animal. It just depends. You know, it's the same thing riding out in the dark. So if you guys want to hunt those days, awesome. If not, um, you know, some guys are, are worn out by that time. So uh, I'm going to start getting into my gear list and see um, what what we've got. And you guys can kind of see what I have. All right, guys. So let's uh, start with weapons. Um, okay, bow season. Going into camp. Um, if you want your bow in a case to go into camp in a plastic case, it will go against your weight limit. Um, they're bulky. They're hard to pack. They're a pain in the butt. Um I don't like doing it, but if that's what you really want, it will go against your weight limit. One thing about that is in archery season, typically you don't need as much cold weather gear, so you might be saving on that. Otherwise, I do have these um, bow slings, okay? Your bow sits inside of them. Sorry, it's kind of dark right there. Um, it wraps up completely. Um, your bow will have full protection. It's got uh, things on the cam. Let me. So here it is, right here. It opens up. Your bow goes in here. Stabilizer sticks through this hole. It's got little pockets, which you don't really need. Um, close it up. You snap it back together. Put these over your cams. Suck it down, and it just sits on your shoulders with the horse um on top of the horse um i used to have guys put their bows on their backpacks and um, what ended up happening was your arrows are sticking up stuff like that um guys this year used to bring they've been coming with me for five years they packed their bows on their backpack for four years this year they they said this was the game changer thing is this company went out of business um, i found three of these online on ebay they are called the game plan bobat uh, and they're for tree stand hunters, actually. Um, so it's made to, to put, put your bow in, have all your gear in it, climb up your tree stand, wrap it around the tree, clip it back in, and then you hunt for the day. Um, I think if these guys would have marketed this to Western Outfitters and stuff, they would have sold like crazy. Um, but that company went out of business. You can still find them on eBay. Now, these are the extra large models. I have a, sm a smaller model, too. Um, but the thing is, they're hard to find. Um, these ones I paid 75 bucks a piece for. Um, well worth it there but they're going for upwards of 180 dollars on ebay as well so i have those i have four of them so if you're um a group of five or something 
we sometimes have to figure something out. I do also have some of those like Primo slings and stuff like that. I just don't trust them. I'm afraid a bow is going to fall out and stuff like that. Um, so we definitely need to, that's one thing. Now, rifle hunters, muzzleloader hunters. Okay, I have scabbards. Um, they go on the horse with you. And basically they're going to be a leather scabbard that your rifle fits in. Now, here's the kicker. I don't have a lot of these that will fit a larger scope um i'm going to show you my two rifles that i carry um, one of them is they're both ruger m77 models one's a 270 with a 3x9 vortex and my load's a 338 wind mag that has a night force 4 to 32 on it so that one right there does not fit in my scabbards um especially with the turrets exposed and everything they it does not fit and um, that becomes an issue so if you want it in a case then we have to add that to your weight so that could be a pretty heavy thing now the thing is they make that trail max rifle scabbard if you want to buy one and bring your own scabbard great that's up to you i'm buying one just for my 338 um so i will have one that will fit a larger scope i hope i haven't gotten it yet hopefully getting it tomorrow so i can see if it fits now the thing is is if you have an oversized scope with turrets and stuff or let's say to, um muzzle loaders one thing i, I want to touch on real quick with that when we get to camp and we pull your muzzle loader out because there's no scopes so I got plenty of scabbards for that. Um, when you pull your muzzleloader out, make sure your push rod is still there. Okay, a lot of times they get stuck in the scabbard when you pull it out. And I'll be riding down the trail. It's not a huge deal because you can usually borrow your buddies. But, uh, you know, if it's in there and you forget it, it could be a problem. So make sure that comes out with that. Um, when we're riding into camp, you can have bullets in your magazine, none in the chamber. Let's be safe about it. Um, if your muzzleloader is loaded, make sure we have to be packing in when the season's open, obviously. If the season's not open, I don't want bullets in your gun. It's just, if we get stopped by Parks Wildlife and stuff like that, um, then that's the deal. Also, if we are going to be hunting on the way in or out, you must have your orange on. Um, you can't jump off the horse and go, oh, get, let me get my bag, this, that. No. If we're packing in and it's hunting, you're legal to hunt, you need to have your, your blaze orange on. And remember, guys, there is, in Colorado, you cannot have camouflage blades. It has to be a vest and a hat. You have to have a hat. Um, that's just what they say. Now, here's the thing. You know, bino harness, uh, backpack, it covers up a lot of your orange, right? Um, I have never had anybody get in trouble for that. But it's also sometimes a good thing. I'll buy one of them cheap Walmart orange vests and throw it over my pack sometimes. Um, just to, you know, just to make sure. So... Make sure you have your orange on. Make sure it's legal orange or pink. Blaze pink. You know, that's legal now. Um, and I'm going to show you how I put um, at least my 270 into the rifle scabbard. Uh, so I'm going to show you a picture of my guns real quick and show you so that you can see that one gun is definitely bigger than the other and will not fit in the scabbard. So, okay, on. so the bottom one is my 270 Vortex 3x9 scope. No muzzle brake or anything. Pretty standard rifle. Top one, my 338. As you can see, scope sizes are definitely way bigger. Plus, this one has a muzzle brake. Um, bipods have to come off. They will not fit in the scabbards regardless. So they do have to come off. Um, you know, put them in your packs. Put them, put them in your gear because they're not going to go in there. All right, guys. So this is a standard rifle case. This is for a scoped rifle. Um, they will be on the side of your horse. So, but we'll try to test them beforehand. Gun just goes in there. Slide it in, bolt locks right in there. This will come over, hard to do it in camera. There you go. This will be on the side of your horse, will be on your right hand side. Sticks up kind of by the horse next so you can watch it. I don't do it backwards. I've had a gun fall out before going up a hill and it slid out the back. Um, I don't know why it was, wasn't mine. It was actually one of our guides that was carrying this rifle that day. Um, but it will be sitting on the side of your saddle, underneath your right leg. Um, so you do need to watch it. Sometimes these come undone. They'll be sitting there flopping. It's not a huge deal. They are in there pretty good. I mean, you can pull them out roughly. It takes a little bit. But this gun here, pack this gun all over the mountain. And I actually usually put this one in one of my sheepskin lined ones. But that's how it sits in there. It's hard to do in the camera. Buttons up, stuff like that. Make sure when we're riding and stuff, we, we, our trails are usually pretty clear, but don't let your horse walk off the trail and hook a tree right here. Stock a break. I mean, it's just one of those things. So you got to really be careful. Um, but this one here is pretty snug. It's got a little bit of room. 
um, but it's not it's protected you know your scope in there everything like that and like I said if you have exposed turrets though make sure you have a zero stop that's one of my biggest things or take a picture of it and know where they're supposed to be at so that's that's that one um, and then as far as muzzle loaders it's not a huge deal um, they fit in most of my my scabbards well they fit in all my scabbards and stuff so um, but like I said, the big guns, the Trail Max scabbards, they do work. They're like 150 bucks. Um, I got the canvas one because it's supposed to be for larger rifles and stuff. Um, and I just think it looks a little bit more Western and, and old. <laughs> um, but otherwise, if you want to bring your own, great. If you're not sure, that's fine. But if you do bring your rifle in a case, please don't bring me a uh you know pelican vault for a rifle i mean they're just heavy alone plus your rifle and with your 75 pound weight limit it's tough plus they're awkward and, and bulky um so that's the biggest thing but um usually we can get you guys in and i have before personally put somebody's rifle on my shoulder and brought it in for them if i had to um, i prefer not to it hurts my back and it would hurt your back and i won't allow you guys to do it um yeah i've been riding for 30 years roughly so it's just, if if I don't like doing it, then it's going to be way uncomfortable on you guys. All right, guys, let's get into clothing. Um, one of my biggest things is, is some guys, they, they come in, they pack way more than they need. Um, you know, and then they say, well, I shouldn't have packed 10 pairs of pants. I only wore two or three. Um, personally, I don't I don't really have a lot of extra gear. I've got my basics with some, some la and I like to layer. Layering's definitely the key. When it gets to be that hot out, um, cold in the mornings hot in the afternoons and re remember you know as the day goes on you're gonna have to have space in your day pack i carry a larger day pack this is actually my day pack it's um pretty large but also i have a lot of room to put gear in and stuff like that so i'm gonna just start out um we'll start out at the bottom socks i've got like four pairs these are uh dickies just wool socks um i wear wool all the time that's kind of my thing um, I've got two small pairs of, these are Howard Head socks that are more of my camp socks. Um, just because at the end of the day, sometimes you want to just kick off if your socks are wet or anything like that. And then I usually have three to four pairs. These are darn tough wool socks. These go all the way up to my uh, knees almost. Um, I'll usually have like three or four pairs of those. I've just got one pair on right now and haven't done laundry. Um, so let's say some guys, they'll go... You know, a pair of socks for every day um, that's fine socks <coughs> excuse me <coughs> socks are light um, and they don't take up a lot of room and so that's one thing um, next thing underwear um, I'll pack three four pairs of underwear but typically I don't change my underwear as much as I think I will um, especially when it's colder out it's just kind of one of those things but um, I just kind of wear Hanes briefs whatever you want to wear that's fine um some guys even buy the sitka or kuyu stuff like that um next up we'll go with my next base layers this here these are uh the sport from meat meat who these are kind of thick um legging type things um i've been wearing wearing some uh they're pretty warm so earlier seasons i don't suggest that i've got I'll bring one pair of those as a bottom. I've got two pairs of these uh, TSLAs. These are lighter um, legging type stuff. I've got a pair of uh, Kuyu zip-offs, which I'll usually put as my top layer so they can be the first layer. I, and what they do is they zip down the sides so I don't have to unlace my boots and everything. I can take these off first. And then I've got a pair of cold proof I think I got these at Costco and I love them, but these are more like if I, if it's going to be super cold out, um, I'll usually put on this pair of thicker camo ones and then possibly these Kuyu and, or these cold proof. It just kind of depends on what's going on for the day. Um, so with tops, I like under armor. I like the spandex type stuff. I've got an under armor. This one here is camo and stuff. Sometimes in archery season, this will be basically what I'm wearing. Um, and then I've got, one of the meat hoff tops and two of the TSLA tops as well. That's kind of my base layers right there. Um, now I have two two regular long sleeve K 
camo shirts. This one's a Kuyu. It's really light, nice. This one here is a little bit thicker. I don't even know what brand that is. If you guys know what brand that is, um, just something I think I picked up. It's a dead deer brand. Um, but I do like the Kuyu a little bit more. Um, so when it gets real warm out, I'll be just down to this and maybe one of my, my tops. Um, and then... Um, I bring, this is one of the Cabela's fleece, like super cold, if it's going to be super cold, but usually I might end up sleeping in this. So it's just kind of one of those things that I just bring along, just this more of a luxury item, um, or if it's going to be really cold. Uh, Kuyu guide pants is what I wear. I got su first light suspenders on them. Uh, suspenders are nice, unless you got a bunch of clothes on, you got to go to the bathroom. Uh, then you got to take off all the layers to get to your suspenders. So that's kind of a pain. Um, mid layers, I've got this core four element hoodie, just something with a hood, cold mornings, if I don't want to have my Kuyu top layer on, I got something with a hood still, and I also bring just a vest. Um, usually this vest is what I bring for archery season, and then if it's rifle season, I have a Kuyu vest, um, for rifle when I have to have my blaze. Um, so that's, that's all, I'll swap out those, those two between the season, um, and that's basically my my layering system so i can really really be as as cool or as as warm as i need to be um between that setup right there um you know it's i and i'm not going to tell you you got to have cool you got to have sick you you wear what you want to wear and that's what you, what you got um and that's kind of that as far as gloves now I okay got these first light these are really light these are more for mornings and archery season stuff like that um merino wool i think is what they are i bring a pair of uh leather gloves just for they help out a little bit and then the real cold season these are actually my ice fishing gloves but sometimes you know in the mornings you want to have something nice and thick i like these ones that they're bigger and everything and they've got the gauntlets on them but also i can throw these off as quick as i can if something comes out so that's that's what that is um as far as a hat i have my blaze orange kuyu hat i also have the camo hat and the same thing um you know i don't really bring a beanie anymore and unless sometimes i'll wear it in the winter or uh, at night i'll wear my beanie if it's really cold out um but that's you got to have your blaze orange hat and vest um archery season i'll have my camo hat and that camo vest. one more piece of gear uh for layering this is a wild rag this is a like a silk rag this is what i wear instead of a neck gaiter i don't like neck gaiters um this here i just wrap around my neck twice tied in a knot um they're really nice to have in the mornings plus it's super light um the other thing is when it's really hot out i can dig, dump it in the water and uh cool myself off Alrighty, footwear guys um so i prefer leather boots these are rockies um they're a little too stiff for me i don't really like them but um and i don't really wear them that much <laughs> I actually mostly guide in my Kenetrek pack boots. There, I can ride into camp in them, um, and then I can hunt in them. Plus, they're waterproof. They've got the rubber bottoms and everything. Not the best boots to be hiking in. I'm not going to lie, but I've been doing it for so long that it doesn't bother me anymore. I have had guys pack in, um, you know, like bogs and stuff like that. That's fine, too, but just remember they're not super comfortable to hike in long distances. Um if you want to wear your, your camp boots or your, your hunting boots in, that's fine. Um, like I said, I wear mine in, and it also helps keep my my weight limit down. But, um, you know, it, that's up to you guys. And as far as boots, wear what's comfortable. Make sure they're broken. One of the worst things is getting up there and trying to break in a pair of boots. You get a blister the first day, and the next five days of your hunt could be the worst day of your life. Um, so make sure your boots are broken, wear them when you're working out, wear them when you're getting going, um, make sure they're broken. Um, my, my buddy Ben, he wears a pair of, um, they used to be called the, the Cabela's archery something. They're uninsulated. He wears them third rifle season. He, he loves them. Um, insulated. Sometimes I, I don't suggest wearing like the Cabela's Infernos. Um, when it comes down to your feet, that is up to you. Um, foot warmers, I don't think they work when you put those little hot hand foot warmer things in there. I don't think they work because um, they don't get oxygen to them. Um, so that's one of those things. Don't rely on that. I'd rather layer up some socks and, and be that way versus trying to, um, you know, 
if my feet get cold, I get miserable. And I'm sure any one of you guys are the same way. Hiking and stuff, sitting and glassing, you want to have good boots. Um, if this is going to be your one and only elk hunt, you might not want to go out and spend $500 on a pair of boots. If you're going to be doing it every year, I definitely suggest going and getting good boots. Waterproof them beforehand, um, but make sure they are broken in. And make sure they got pretty good traction on them. Um, you know, this right here, this is the Rockies. Um, they're called the, they got the super lug on them. My Kenetrex, that's what they look like. So good traction, but also there's a piece of luxury gear that I have that can also um, change that. Me and Ben, when we do go third rifle, um, a lot of times we have those uninsulated archery boots um, and we'll, we'll have crampons. I'll show you guys what I have for crampons. They are hiking crampons, so they flex. They're not like ice climbing crampons. Don't get ice climbing crampons. You will regret it completely. I'll show you what I have, the two that I suggest, and that way you uh, have good crampons. And if it's muddy, they're great. If it's snowy, they're great. You can cover some a lot better country um, and everything like that. So I'll show you those later on. But um, having good boots is definitely a suggestion. All right, guys, I'm going to talk about my bino harness. Um, so I've got a Kuyu bino harness. Um, I'm running 10 by 42 Vortex Talons. These are old, really old um, HD glass. Definitely suggest HD. Otherwise, because if you're going to be sitting in them for a while, your eyes will definitely thank you. Um, attached to my harness, this little string goes down to an elk call. Just a little cow call right there. I've got this little, this little thing from Bendable Products. I can put a mouth... Uh, Primo's mouth call in there if I need to. It's always right here. I put this on here to clean my glasses and stuff. Over here, we've got a rangefinder pouch. Just hooks right on the side there. Rangefinder sits in there. And then on this side, I got my wind checker just in case. And then a GPS pouch for my Garmin inReach. Which, I suggest you guys have one. You have to have at least one in camp. Remember that. At least one in camp of either this or a Zolio. Um, I don't like the spots with the pre-done messages because they're just a pain. Um, if I have to, if you know, send me a message, say hey, we need a resupply. Um, basically, I have to ride into camp and find out what you need. Um, besides your extra food and stuff for the rest of the week. Um, if you need propane, small propanes, um, silverware, plasticware, uh, plates, toilet paper, I got to know. So I prefer the Garmin's or the Zolio's. Garmin's definitely do better, in my opinion, Garmin to Garmin. Um, I'll give you guys a little business card that I have with all of my info, including my Garmin, my cell phone, and my email. And um, that way you can get a hold of me. If I'm up on the mountain and you send me a text sometimes to my cell phone, they don't send iMessage. They send regular texts. Well, they don't always come through on, on uh, Wi-Fi. So I want you guys to definitely message my Garmin too so we can talk Garmin to Garmin. That way I can get a hold of you guys that way as well. Um, in the front of this case, there's a little zipper pouch here. There's really nothing to stick in there, but I actually put my tags in there. Um, I mean, I'm basically, if, if I don't have this on me, I'm probably not hunting. So um, it's pretty comfortable, uh, and it's really nice to have. I like this one. I used to have the Alaskan Guide Creations one. Um, I bought that one when I got my, my talons. And I don't know, I just decided this year I wanted something a little different. The way this one opens, I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, I got to really, if I do that, I got to make sure I pull it all the way down. But it does cover them so that everything's covered. I'll also take my cell phone and just stick it in there behind there. Um, and then I bought this little pouch here that goes on the bottom. Um, doesn't fit my cell phone. I got bullets in here right now for the 300. Um, they also make a... And it's just Velcros on there. It's kind of tacky. I don't know if I like it or not. Um, but I haven't ripped it off yet. And then it's got another spot where you can put something else on the bottom too. Um, when it comes down to it, they make another ammo holder where you can put on the bottom of this. Thing is, if I'm carrying my 338, they only fit up to 300 mag. So that won't work. Um, but I like to have bullets in here. Stick my Copenhagen in there. Um, you know, it, little things. It's just, it's, but the thing is when I'm hiking... Something like that. I can hear my bullets jingling. I don't like that. So I actually bought for my 338 a uh, 
butt stock thing to put my my rounds in with the dope card and everything um just kind of something that i've figured out um so that's that's this gear and remember this will not go against your uh your weight limit if you're wearing it i don't have a problem with you guys wearing these on the horses they're super easy everything like that um these extra little clips here they actually have to go to my binoculars if i want to so if i drop them or whatever thing is i find it so much easier I can do whatever I want with my binos, put them on my tripod, whatever, and I don't have to unclip everything and stuff like that. So um, definitely suggest one of these. Uh, having good glass is a, a major thing. I'm telling you guys, when you're hiking, you need to be out there glassing. Um, I don't If you're in the timber, anything, you know, if you're not glassing every 20 to 30 yards, you're probably going to be pushing stuff out that you don't even know is there. So I like to, I'm in my glass a lot um and then if we're on a guided hunt or something there's times midday rifle season we'll sit down we'll glass for four or five hours um so have good glass and be and use it you know um it, it's just good to have good glass your eyes will thank you and if you're trying to spot something and see it having good glass is always good um i'm going to get into my uh, kill kit now and show you guys kind of what I have for my kill kit and my survival kit. Okay guys So this is my kill kit. Um, I've gone with these uh, Argales, they're really lightweight. I've got two sets right now. This set the the mob pack will fit a uh, Quartered elk with bone in these high country pack will fit um, a, a boned out elk um, these come with like four quarter bags plus a spare meat bag. Um, and this, you know, it's really light. It comes with this. Um, inside of here, I also put, you can call me a, a weenie or whatever, cut resistant cotton gloves. Um, well, they're probably not cotton, but um, one in each of them so that I have those right there. Um, getting into my kill kit, I got this little coon bag here and I fit everything in it. Now there's items in here that I have that you don't necessarily need to have. Um, this right here, Caribou Gear Hunter's Tarp. This is really nice. It's like uh, just a tarp. It's got little stakes with it, and you can lay it out. It's, this one's green. They make them in blaze or green. Um, and it's just a tarp. I'll lay it out to throw meat on real quick. Um, you can use it as a tarp, a poncho, to shade your meat, anything like that. Um, so that's kind of something that I just picked up, and I'm starting to use it and see what happens. Um, a knife. I've got this... Uh, revolt knife this thing is just basically what i have this for is basically popping hip joints um it's got this little skinning blade that pops out of the handle um kind of a cool thing I, it doesn't work on elk i can't the hide's too thick to use it but this is mainly for um getting around neck joints hip joints stuff like that because um you know the havilons the outdoor edges they just don't have the the means to do it um, I've got this little baggie. I've got about four sets of rubber gloves in here and about 15 replacement blades for my Havilon knife. Um, these things are really slick. They're nice to use. Um, I like those. Always have extra blades though. I've also got some of these wet wipes. These are sh a shower on the go. They're two feet by one feet. I got two of those in there mainly for cleanup at the end. Got my pen to sign my tag and my client's tag. Got some zip ties in case I need them to put a tag on, uh, zip tie a game bag shut, whatever I need that for. I also bring this knife sharpener for my fixed blade knife. These things weigh next to nothing, and I think they work pretty well. These here are porta wipes. You dump some water on these, and they turn into a pretty decent sized cloth. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I got these because I guess it's emergency toilet paper too if I really need it. Um, but just for cleaning up afterwards. That's also what the gloves are for a little bit. But it's always nice to have. I've got this real cheap little headlamp in here just in case. And a lighter. This one here, I don't, I actually have a better lighter, but this one's just in here for right now. Um, I'm going to throw that out because I don't really need it. So there's that um, for my, that's my kill kit. Um, putting this kit together, I ran how much the these bags and all this cost. And it was like $400. Um, I would like to sell them for guys, but you know i could definitely pull out stuff like this 150 dollar knife um and stuff like that but just kind of one of those things next up i got this uh slonic headlamp so what i really liked about these is sorry it came with a case 
Um, I don't know how many times this is rechargeable. I don't know how many times I've gone in my pack and my headlamp's on. Um, you know, it sucks. And when you really need it, it's good. So this little case here makes it so much nicer. And I've also got the recharge, the recharging cord in here. I've got this flashlight. This is a um, Nikron V70 rechargeable flashlight. It also, um, it's got a magnetic end on it. It can turn, stuff like that. Just to have, it's got all kinds of different settings. I think it even got green. red flashing red so it's kind of a, a cool flashlight to have uh, a little heavy but it's also rechargeable and runs off of the same charging port as my slonic marking tape um this can go on my kill kit it just won't fit in there but this is something emergencies um marking your game if you kill one and i'm coming in to get it so i can see it better stuff like that this is always good to have or if you're tracking something you can use this um, to track the blood and everything especially if you might not make you know make kind of a subpar shot um it just helps out it makes it a lot easier to track it. all right um emergency kit this is just a little kuyu bag here um i got some fire starter stuff it's like sawdust with some other stuff um electrical tape you never know tape up your finger after you cut it whatever um i got this little spork thing in here it's actually a spork and it's got a knife in the handle too And then back here, it's got a ferro rod too. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, I mainly have that just because sometimes I do carry like my camp stove and I'll show you guys that um, to, um, you know, have a meal or something on the mountain. Um, also in here, this is my more of a butane lighter. It's a little bit nicer. So that's, this is, like I said, more of my survival kit. Um, another 10 paracord, it's lightweight. I got one of these wrap it straps um, i've used these to wrap around an elk's leg and then tie paracord to it i've got some carabiners just in case uh, multi-tool another carabiner sog scissor tool um, this one here is going to go out it's going to get replaced by that one and then i've also got some hand warmers these are really good in case of emergency these body warmers you stick them to your chest right above your heart and they will heat you right up as well as just some regular old hand warmers um so that's kind of my survival type of stuff just in case um now when it comes to you guys as kill kits and survival kits that's up to you um this is just stuff i found you know you're up there on the mountain and you just need it you know i cut my fingers sometimes especially trying to get the tenderloins out um because i do the gutless method so i really i have to go through the back into the stomach cavity to get those out um i always cut myself that's kind of why i got the cut resistant glove is because i always slice my finger um you know and even with a rubber glove obviously if i'm doing a client's animal they don't really want to see me bleeding all over everything so that's kind of why i got those um the other stuff it's i'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it um always love that quote i use it all the time and that's just one of those things that you know better to have it so um you know even a small first aid kit i carry a larger first aid kit when i'm out there which is one of my uh luxury items but uh well, I have to have it for guiding, so um, there's that. Two boxes of bullets. Um, definitely wouldn't. I I usually carry about ten rounds with me up on the mountain. These are just more in camp, but you gotta remember they are heavy. Um, but if you run out of ammo, it kind of sucks up there. Um, so I do bring some extra bullets to have in camp. Next thing is a water bottle. Um, I have these Nalgene's. I got the the bit, oh, wide mouth one, and then I got two smaller ones. I'm not a big camelback guy, so that's what I carry these for. And also on my pack, I've got this from Bendable Products, and it fits my water bottle right perfectly, um, which is really nice to have there, right there when I'm going. Um, my pack is a Slumberjack, and it's you know it's a pretty big pack. I'm not gonna lie, um, but you know if I'm if I do have to pack some meat or something, I can fit it in there. Plus, I got all this extra room, and once I have it packed up and everything, I can suck this all down to make it really small. Um, so that's kind of why I have the bigger pack. Now let's get into your sleeping bags. Um, so here's the deal, guys. Uh, I put usually have the wood stove in camp. Um, if it's archery season, you know a lot of the, a lot of archery muzzleloader guys they don't want to have a, a, a fire just for the scent. Um, some people don't like to have them at all because of you know alerting the animal stuff like that. That is completely up to you. Um, rifle seasons, I will have 
the wood stoves in there. Some camps I might put a buddy heater in there. Here's the deal with my wood stoves in camp. Um, you're gonna go through wood. I try to put chainsaws in my forest camps. Um, but again, I don't, there's not always enough wood to get you through the week. So you might have to do it, but there's also a bow saw and ax and maul and everything. Um, that's up to you. Now here's the deal with the wood stoves. You are gonna be stoking it uh, depending on the camp, whether it's pine or aspen, every 45 minutes to an hour. So I, I highly suggest a good sleeping bag, like a zero degree bag. Um, and that way, you know, you can have a fire in the evening and then let it die out and be comfortable throughout the day. Um, but, you know, that's the thing is you're going to kind of have to figure out one guy each night to stoke the fire. Um, I'd highly suggest you don't make the guy right next to the fire that night stoke it because he's going to be the last one to get cold um but if that's what you want to do that's fine um, that's up to you guys the buddy heaters and stuff like that just remember is you're going to go through propane don't leave them on during the day when you're gone i know you want to come back to a warm tent and stuff um, the other option is the cook stoves i've had guys bring those into the tent if it gets that cold and run those on low you know just to bring bring the chill off or in the mornings they'll fire up the percolator to get the coffee going and heat up the tent so when it comes down to that stuff that is up to you guys um personally like in my guided camps i try to tell guys because i'm going to be the one stoking it usually um and sometimes i'm not even in your tent i'm in my own tent with the cook and stuff like that and the other guides um so it's going to be on you guys i mean we're not going to come in there every hour and check your stove and all that um it's kind of up to you guys and that's why i do suggest a good sleeping bag um weight wise remember try to pack them down as tight as you can usually the sleeping bags um i can fit on top of the panniers or the the pack saddles um one per mule usually sometimes i can get two on top of stuff depending how bulky your gear is um but having a good sleeping bag will help out um in camp i have sleeping pads um i i don't want you guys to bring your own sleeping pads because already in camp um it's just another thing that's bulky. They're, they don't weigh much and they're bulky. That's one of the problems. And they're already up there. Um, they're not, they're just those air up foam pads type of things. They're not air, you know, they got foam in them, but they're like a Coleman, um, Coleman pad. They're, I don't know, they get to be like an inch and a half, two inches thick. Um, they're not super bad, but uh, you know, you're in elk camp. We're not gonna bring you in a mattress, I'm sorry. So um, when it comes down to that stuff, if you really want to bring your own, that's fine. But remember, it goes against your weight limits. Alrighty, guys, onto the luxury items. We'll call it. Um, I got my two extra water bottles. Like I said, I don't like Camelbacks, so I will fill these up, thousand milliliters. Um, I think that's one liter. Um, I bring these because I just like them better. And then spotting scopes. Okay, I'm not going to say you're going to use them a ton. This is a big spotting scope. This is a Vortex 20 to 60 by 85. Um, I pack this sometimes, but. Most of the time, these end up getting left in camp most of the days. So if you want to have a spotting scope, that's fine, but it goes against your weight limit. Um, next thing, gaiters. I like gaiters. They are a lifesaver. Um, they help keep your boots drier. They help keep stuff off your legs, stuff like that. I wear them all the time. Uh, next luxury item, my first aid kit, obviously. I have to carry this for guiding. If you want to bring a filter with you, this is just a... Uh, gravity filter um, some guys bring the Sawyer squeeze bags for if they're out and about I'm just putting this in here to add weight to, sh to just to show that I have more stuff um, sunglasses case what I usually do with this is I fill it up with my medicines um, I get heartburn a lot really bad so I have a lot of Tums in here um, a leave um, anything like that it just makes it you know kind of I like being organized so I put my stuff in there um, camp shoes if you want to bring them great crocs these are twisted x moccasins um tennis shoes whatever you want to bring they're great to have get you out of your boots help you relax a little bit um next thing is this is my uh optimus terra cook stove little stove for up on the mountain if i have a dehydrated meal or something um i have this in there just i'm just putting extra stuff in here too to add weight um just to see how much my stuff really weighs um so i have that just in case i don't pack it every day but if we're planning on staying out or spiking out, that's a great thing to have. Jet boils, same thing. Um, next thing, charging my phone and my GPS. I run these DeWalt batteries with this adapter. Um, those little solar pack, battery pack things take forever to recharge. Um, 
you know, they're just a pain in the butt. You only get a couple charges out of them. They don't weigh a lot. So if you want to bring five, six of them or whatever, that's fine. Um, but this here, I usually get like five or six charges on my phone and two to three charges on my GPS. Um, I use my phone and my GPS a lot, obviously. So that's why I have this versus the other packs. Um, this is just a glassing pad, just a light thing to sit on. It helps, especially in the snow, sitting on rocks. It's a luxury item. That's all it is. Um, but it weighs next to nothing and it's not bulky. Okay. Um, I talked to you guys about my crampons. Uh, okay. These are Catula. Uh, these are the aluminum ones. I picked these up at the, uh, the local climbing thrift shop for like 50 bucks. Um, they extend out to the end. They're a little dirty right now and stuff. This is what I put on my boots if I'm hiking, um, you know, in nasty stuff. Um, my buddy Ben got me started on these. I love them. I pack them everywhere. They don't weigh much. These are the aluminum ones. They do wear out a little bit quicker, if, especially if you're walking on rocks and stuff. But they do then fully extend it out. But as you can see, they flex so I can hike in them. Um, and then they just... Get, I got a bunch of mud in them, so they're kind of dirty. Um, but then they just fold up, and they come in this bag here. And I'll just put those in there, and that's that. Um, you know, I have more luxury items on my list that you guys are welcome to bring and stuff. Um, I'm just trying to go through everything with you guys to help you out the best I can to understand all this extra stuff. Um, and that's basically what I'm doing. Okay, so um, when it comes down to you guys' gear packing it up so i i put a lot of stuff in my backpack um and then i also have this eskimo dry bag um so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do a time lapse and i'm going to pack up all my stuff into my two bags and then just to show you what um kind of how i have it set up to help you guys out and then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in panniers like how i like to do it and then i'm going to weigh it and we're going to see if i'm even under my own weight limit um now this is just gear this does not include your food we'll get over that a little bit later um and i'm going to try to do a video on food alone just because um just to help you guys out to see what i'm going to talk about it and try to try to do it the best i can to help you out um but i just this is mainly just to see if i can keep my gear under the weight limit that i give you guys um and and all that Okay guys, so there's everything. There's all my clothes, all my hunting gear, my boots, my camp shoes, and my sleeping bag. Um, so that's, everything that was out is in there. Um, the only thing I didn't put in there was my extra pair of boots, but, um, and like I said, I'll wear these into camp, but I'm gonna put them in here for the weight. That way if I was wearing those, or I was wearing these, I still have that extra pair of boots in there, plus my camp shoes. Okay, guys, so this is the pannier that we put everything into, okay? Um, so I'm going to try to do this the best I can. It's kind of a pain, but uh, i to put my dry bag in here. Remember, if you got stuff that's breakable, let me know because sometimes this stuff gets stuffed pretty tight. Okay, so this is all everything in there, and minus my sleeping bag, but like I said with the sleeping bag, that usually goes on top, so I'm not going to put it in here, but I can, and I'm going to weigh this with my scale. Oh, 
hard to see. Um, it was 70 pounds, um, and that includes a pannier. Pannier gonna, is going to weigh, um, I think they're five and a half pounds. Um, so that's that's that. So let's just say minus a pannier, we'll say five pounds. I'm at 65, plus my sleeping bag. You know, I'm, we're going to put my stuff at about 70 pounds um, total. And that also I put in there my extra vest, um, my camp stove, um, the boots, which, like I said, I usually wear those in there, um, and and all that. So I'm I'm staying under the weight limit, and I still have a bunch of luxury items um, as well. So, um, and that will be you know we'll mix and match gear. But the way my setup is is I've got two bags that both fit in the pannier really well. Um, I can stuff my boots in there, my camp shoes. And then what we will do is we're going to cover this with a canvas tarp as well. So I put your sleeping bag up on top of the, the saw bucks. Um, it'll be covered, strapped down and everything like that. Um, but like I said, one sleeping bag, typically I could definitely put my sleeping bag on this and still be under my weight limit. And I've just got a Coleman, um, sleeping bag. I, I picked it up cheap for this summer, but, um, that's what I use. And, um, yeah, so I'm. That's that's everything I have um, for a, a week long hunt. And you know, in in all honesty, I'm not gonna wear all four pairs of my long underwear, five pairs of my long underwear. Um, you know, in all honesty, one pair of pants I'm gonna wear it all week, whether I get bloody or not. Um, it's just kind of one of those things. A lot of guys don't switch them out. Um, it's just kind of you just get you get set up and you just want to keep going. So. Um, there's definitely extra items I have. There's definitely items that maybe I don't have that you want to bring, um, you know, batteries for your headlamps, but I do rechargeable stuff on everything. It helps cut down quite a bit of weight. So, um, as soon as I can get the food together, I want to do a food one just to help you guys out. But typically if it's four guys, I should be able to fit all your, all your gear on two mules. So that would be 300 pounds total of, of gear, um, for four guys and then plus your food so i'm going to do the food one and what i'm going to do with the food one is i'm going to try to weigh it out so that i can help you guys know what to bring what not to bring stuff like that um and 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 everything like that now one thing with food is i want you guys to split it up into uh two sets you know you want to have your pack in food and then the food that i'm going to bring in halfway through the week um, this cuts down on weight, you know, I could, it could be 150 pounds of food. Um, but my mules are working for three months straight hard. And if I could cut it, cut it out, it's a lot better. If you all do bring in all of your food at once, you will not get a resupply unless we're coming in to pack out meat. So just remember that. That's why I want to have two that also I'm coming in midway through the week to check on you guys and everything like that. Um, so split up your food. I know some of you guys come from different places, stuff like that. Um, the thing is you can say, John, you do Monday, Bill, you do Tuesday. Um, Craig, you do Wednesday and then, you know, we each do two days or whatever. Um, however it works out. And one guy does all the snacks. Um, so when I get the food together, I'm going to do that video and kind of tell you guys when it's coming, like, you know, chewy bars, take them out of the, the boxes, um, put them into whatever you got um you know sometimes i just throw it all into a rubbermaid tote and it helps out a lot and uh you know then i have a cooler on one side and rubbermaid tote on the other thing is they have to be even weight so um, we might throw a sleeping bag on one or something like that or a backpack anything like that um and i'm kind of i know i'm kind of rambling a lot but I, it's just stuff that comes to my mind here and there um one thing i'm going to bring up frame packs um I know some guys, they, they, they want a frame pack in case they do have to bring their elk out of spot. I can't always get to a lot of some spots with horses. So you have to bring the elk to, to where I can get to. Um, that's uh, kind of one of those things of frame packs are nice, but like my pack, it has an internal frame on it. I can throw a quarter in there and go. I can lug a quarter over my shoulder, whatever I got to do to get it done. Um, so that's kind of one of those things of frame packs with the the top bar and everything they stick up so high um they're bulky so if you're gonna do that fill it with gear get it filled up and 
you know, heavier instead of just a frame pack. Um, some areas, I'm going to tell you, don't even bring it. Um, if you need it, I'll bring it to you, um, especially if we're really pushing the weight limit. Um, and I think I went over this earlier, no more day packs on the horses. So um, don't plan on wearing a day pack or a fanny pack or something like that. If you want to bring a water bottle with you, that's fine. I got saddlebags on the horses, but also I'm not going to let you fill up the saddlebags with a bunch of extra gear that you forgot to put in and stuff. Um, and um, luxury items, you know, stuff like that. There's, there might be stuff that I just say, like, it's, it's not going to go in this round or, or whatever. So, um, you know, beer, alcohol, stuff like that. You got to remember, that stuff is heavy. Bottled water, I don't like to pack in. I even put, you know, three liters of water in my pack to add extra weight to it. Um, typically, I want you to empty your water bottles um because you're gonna have water up at camp so um there's that also make sure you bring your own gravity filter um we've had i had some clients that had issues with some platypus it could have just been a bad bad bag or something but they put water in and they ripped um i run the catadines or the msr gravities um i did run the platypuses but after i've had a you know an accident you get up there and your your one bag doesn't won't fill up um it kind of Kind of sucks because then i gotta go get you one um <laughs> so um and i also do suggest bringing at least one extra filter cartridge for that um for that filter because they do clog up um the creeks they they do have sediment and stuff like that in them that's one reason you, you want to filter it um the other reason is obviously for uh not to get sick and stuff so make sure you have your filters and um you know they're they're super light you know one to two cartridges and do not leave them outside and let them freeze it will break the cartridge and mess them up so that's another thing bring them into your tent at night to put them in your sleeping bag whatever you got to do um don't let them freeze because then they quit working probably. so i hope this video helps you guys out i know it's long-winded um but there's a lot to go over especially your first time coming out um like i said i'm gonna try my best to get this food one going um before first rifle season um so i can help you guys out with that um but yeah, I hope this video helps. I'm going to try to do um, time stamps in the comments of where I talk about each thing so that you can know what my kill kit is, if you want to just scroll to that, um, what my, my gear is, anything like that. Um, so let me get this uploaded, and I hope it helps. Um, stay safe out there, guys. Make sure you have your tags. Um, archer guys, releases, arrows. Shoot your bows. Shoot your rifles. Be comfortable with them um have your ammo bolts in your guns have that had that happen before um your tags are your main thing if you're up there without a tag you're kind of sol on that one um and without bullets and a gun or bows and arrows and muzzle loaders primers powder you're not going to get a lot done unless you're going to go daniel boone it and go after them with a knife but i don't suggest that um if you guys have any questions throw them in the comments uh give me a call whatever you want to do um and we hope to see you and i hope this helps you guys out um instead of me trying to explain it you know and you trying to visualize it in your head i hope this makes it to where you can just see it and and have a, a great idea um dry bags are always great to have your gear in like i said we do cover our our uh, panniers with canvas tarps and stuff but they're not 100 percent waterproof so a dry bag to keep your clothes drier if it is downpouring or something is a great idea um but my biggest thing is is bulky light items are hard to pack like a sleeping bag can be a bulky light item that takes up a lot of room and um you know so don't when i pack this stuff i always want the heaviest stuff on the bottom okay um, just like you packing up your pack, if you're going to go rucking or something, you want the heaviest stuff down lower, not on top. You don't want to be top heavy. So same thing with my horses. We want to make sure, sorry, I dropped a rain gun on my camera. Um, want to make sure you've got everything you need, um, as well as it helps us out. Um, and like I said, there's items in there, like my spotting scope weighs a lot. It's a heavy spotting scope. Um, most guys end up not even bringing them. They don't. Or they'll bring them in the next year. They, they never used them. Um, that's one thing. Um, trying to think of items that guys, the guys bring. Your sidearm. Um, if you're an archery guy, a sidearm's not a bad idea. I mean, you run into a bear or a lion. It's, you got to draw your bow and everything. Some guys, they'll pack it in. 
and then it sits in camp. That's fine. I bring my sidearm in, um, and it sits basically in, in the tent. Um, I use it for at nighttime, just in case if a bear comes in or something. That's basically the only reason I have a sidearm. Um, rifle guys, if you got to put down an animal, you've got a rifle. Um, so with your sidearms, just, you know, it's kind of one of those things I don't, I don't highly suggest them. I don't, but I'm not going to tell you not to bring it because that's security for you. Um, but I do like to, I like to carry more of a subcompact. Um, I, I carry a Glock 19, nine millimeter if I do carry one at all. Um, my buddy Ben carries a SIG super micro compact or something, um, but he'll carry it on him at, at all times, but it fits in his pocket. So it's not a big deal. Um, big bulky revolvers and stuff. I'll tell you what, I carried around a Ruger Vaquero 45 long Colt for a couple seasons and I hated it. Um, so just, just think about that too. Um, and when you're up there in camp, Hey, a notebook or a book, you know, if you're sitting a wallow or something or you get bored, a book's a great thing to have. Um, a notebook with a pen, you know, you can write down, hey, bring this next time, bring that. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet you you're going to get home and go, what was that one item that I, I, I should have had? Um, but it's always nice. You know, you can journal as well. If you want to journal in there, you know, some guys like to do that. I think it's kind of cool. Remember the hunt even better. Um, but my biggest thing is, I mean, you got your phone and stuff. Um, you can put notes in there and stuff, but um, that's what I do. But it's always something a little bit more fun. Um, I think that's just about it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm going to try to get this food one going and uh, I'm going to get this uploaded for you guys.